Ah, the world of behaviorism. We're still looking at classical conditioning. Today we're looking at John Watson and poor little Albert. It will become readily apparent in just a minute. But before John Watson, psychology was studied mainly through introspection. People studying their own internal processes and internal states. That essentially was what Freud was. Introspection. Hmm, let me see what I think. So, he brought some scientific rigor. He was an American psychologist. Not that that has to do with anything. But he moved away from the study of consciousness, a very subjective entity which cannot be measured. And he said, wait a minute, we have to only study measurable things. He, uh, uh, anything not measurable, anything that you can't measure or not directly contacted should be avoided. So he looked at the study of behavior only and the conditions or experiences that affect or cause behavior can be objectively observed and measured. So poor little Albert. Oh, by the way, he thought to Watson personality was just a collection of conditioned reflexes. He thought that humans inherited only three emotions, anger, fear, and love. And through classical conditioning, these three emotions and the variations became attached to stimuli or different things, people, and experiences. So to him, human beings was simply a, were simply a responding organism going through life, responding to various stimuli willy Nilly, and over a time, reflexive patterns become reinforced, and variability in personality, one's personality, was simply a matter of varied experiences, reinforcements, and punishments, aversive conditions, and so forth. So we do not have personality, we just have a series of conditioned responses. That's according to him, and he was a little extreme, granted, as you will see. Poor, poor little Albert in 1920. An experiment. 11-month-old Albert. A white rat and a steel bar and hammer. Before the experiment, Albert, this little child, was presented with a rat. He had no fear in reaching out and touching it when he saw it. Now, during the initial part of the experiment, Albert saw the rat and reached for it, and as soon as he touched it, a researcher would run up behind him and hit a large steel bar with a hammer. Of course, Albert was frightened and cried and fell forward. They did this many, many times. When the rat was presented, a loud, scary noise. They continued this, and Albert eventually began to fear the rat. He would cry and try to crawl away as soon as he saw the rat. And they did this, the same thing with other objects. They present a dog and they climb. They present a white rabbit, a cotton fur coat, a Santa Claus mask. All things little Albert loved, but they condition it, gong, 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 so that Albert began to fear. Of course, we couldn't do that today. I wonder what happened to poor little Albert. Is he become a serial killer of some sort? We do not know. Watson showed, however, that emotions, emotional reactions, could be altered through classical conditioning. Here's the classical conditioning. The unconditioned stimuli, loud banging noise, bong, bong, bong. Unconditioned response, Albert's reaction to the noise, ooh, ooh, ah. Unconditioned stimuli was paired with a rat. The conditioned stimuli was the rat became the conditioned stimuli. All right? So the rat became attached to the banging noise, that condi uh, so that the rat became a conditioned stimuli. So the conditioned response was the reaction to the rat every time it saw, he saw. So instead of reacting to the, and this seems kind of, uh, this seems kind of, uh, 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 this seems kind of like it should just make perfect sense, but we're kind of putting structure to what we know intuitively with this. So the law of contiguity, two things follow closely in time, become associated with each other. Learning occurs because of close association of events. The more times they occur together, the stronger the bond or association becomes. Now the difference between 
Wechtsin, and Pavlov. To Pavlov, the unconditioned stimuli was paired many times with the neutral stimuli, and you got behaviors. Now, Watson, the unconditioned stimuli was followed by the neutral stimuli, and you had an emotional response. That's the difference between the two. All right, end of part two, an overview, John Watson and poor, poor little Albert.